Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Bookings. In this module, I want to go through how you can create a bookings feature using Microsoft Bookings, which is part of Office 365. It doesn't come with every single license in Office 365. It needs to be not the A1 version, but the other ones, A3, A5, they will have the bookings app. Now, if you don't know whether you've got it or not, if you go to apps, and mine's there because I've been using it, but all apps, it would then show up in all apps. So if it doesn't show there, you haven't got it on your subscription. And once you click on bookings, this page opens up. If you've never opened uh, bookings before, it will ask you to create a site. And I've already done that and you do it through the business information really. So basically that is a name I put in for my site. So it's easy software training. And you can fill all this information in if you want. I've filled some of this. Most of mine's going to be online, so I've left it blank. It's not an address, it's got an email for replies to go to for bookings and a website. And all of this can be filled in. But what you can fill in in this bit is the time scales. So if this is your normal opening hours, you can select these or you can add different times if you don't want any of these or you want to work longer than that. People do overtime. It's closed on Sundays. So that's the business information and there's more information further down. There is a, you can see I've added my logo there. So you can just change that. Initially, there's just blank. You can just add the upload a logo. Now, going up from the bottom, if I go into services, this is the services that you create. So I've created three services. This is this initial consultation is a default option, which you can delete once you've um, added your own. So if I add another one, so you can see how it works, I'll just go add service and I'll add PowerPoint intro production and getting started with PowerPoint is what I'm going to put in there. Location is going to be online. This is just going to be an online course. Comes up with lots of different options. Now this little checkbox here will create a Teams link, a Teams meeting, online meeting, which is what this is going to be. So whoever books this course can click on the link and join the team meeting. And next box down is duration for this course. It's going to be six hours. And now this buffer time, I'm going to put that on. It gives you a limit to what people can book in terms of before the course. Let's say you can book up to an hour before the course starts. Um, you can tick this on and off, let customers, minimum attendance one, that's, that's okay. Price is going to be set as fixed price, 250 pounds per person. I'm not going to fill that in. And then you've got some custom fields here that you can modify the fields. So if I want, that's already ticked. So customer is going to get an email. Uh, not going to get an email, has to fill an email in when he books, otherwise you can't communicate them. You can tick that, but you might not get that. And likewise with these. So if you tick these, the customer's not going to be able to book uh, if they don't want to put their details in. So just be careful um, of that. You can also add a question to this list. If you don't, um, if you want to add a different ones, you can just add a question. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave that blank. And then further down, You've got lots of things that are greyed out because these are set up elsewhere, but these are the default settings um, that you can change and we'll change them later on. Staff is also greyed out um, and you can change that in, in their sections. But what we do need to do is allocate a member of staff to this course who can teach this course. So I'm going to say Alana, Ashley and Billy can teach this course and then I'm going to save that. And that one is in there, PowerPoint at the top there. And now you can see who's assigned to these different courses. So Alana is the only one that can do the word course, for example. Now, if I go into staff, you can see a list of all the staff there. What you've got at the top is a button to add more staff and you can color code and um, give the working times for this person. Uh, if you want, I'm just going to discard that and go into one that's already done. So Alana is, is yellow at the moment. These are her working hours. She's got a Saturday off, but I'll 
plus that so she can work Saturday. Um, and then if I come down this list, there's no phone number, but that's all I want to do for her. And it's as simple as that. You just click and add your staff, save the details, and then you've got a staff list like so. Now customers, I've got a couple of customers, people have been booking. You can create a new customer. So I'll create a customer there, I'll put myself in Steve Saxton and then tab and email. I'll put in as my Gmail Google Mail dot com, that's how old that is. And I'll put down Saxo. I'm not going to put my phone there. I'm just going to save that. So you can add contacts like that, or you can, um, if anybody wants to book through the bookings app, they, they add their contacts then, and then they, they, they will appear in this list. Now the booking page itself is already being published. I've already published this, and you've got a link at the top um, but you, that you can embed into, or, or share it to Facebook, Twitter, etc. And there is an option to embed the code into your web page if you wanted to. Just copy that and put it into your web page. Now these options here, this is something you've got to be careful of because obviously if somebody's using Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo, or all that sort of stuff, if you've ticked this, they're not going to be able to book. So don't tick that uh, if you've got an external facing booking form. This one is going to be left as um, disabled because I want my um, booking page to be indexed on search engines. Coming down, this is for data protection. So I've just put test data there. They have to tick this that they agree. But basically what you put there is uh, we are going to basically you're going to capture their data. So you want their permission to do that. And they're going to tick. Um, they can't book unless they tick that option. So I've just put test data. And when we go into the bookings page, you'll see that. So this is the scheduling part that was grayed out earlier on. Um, what you've got there is a time increments, lead time, maximum, minimum lead time, one hour, maximum lead time, a whole year. Send email, invite to customers in addition to confirmation email, notify. These are all preferences that you can set on the bookings page. So this booking when free, not bookable, custom hours, you can set that there as well. I'm going to leave that booking when free. And then if you go on the other side, you've just got different color schemes that you can set there. And then if I open the booking page, you can see this is all your services are listed. And what you can do if you want to book, this is what the customer would see. So let's say I want to book a word course. I select the word course. I select the date and time and I've got this set so I can select a tutor. Now there's only one person that can do this course, which is Alana. So I'll select her. And then you've got to add your details. So I'll add my details again. Email. Googlemail.com. And this is that um, data option I said that the person that books has to tick this otherwise they can't book so I will tick that that would not just say test data obviously that would be a sentence or something or a link to something that you have to tick so what's it saying there please date and time I thought I did click date and time I didn't click the time nine o'clock and then book so what happens now is I book that so if I go to the calendar, this is Alana's calendar. What she should get is that book in there, 26th of April, Steve Saxton. And there's a link to the Teams meeting, join your appointment. Now what Steve Saxton should get, if I go into his email, just I should get the same thing. And there it is. Confirmed, same email, and then you can see it there. Join the Teams meeting. Now, if I go back to bookings, we're on the bookings page there, 
and calendar you've got different um, options of doing a booking there and you've got different views so we're on day view so you can see all the stuff and then if I navigate through these you can see they'll start getting busy so Alana's quite busy there look and then if I go on to the 20th quickly or was it 26 there's that word booking if I go to work week you've got that if I go to normal week and then you've got the month view where you can see all of those but if I go back to the day view and go on to that's today so if I go forward to uh, Monday you can also just double click on there and it creates the option for a booking so I'll put my details in again um, cancel googlemail.com and I double clicked under Ashley so he is um, available for this he's got no conflicts but you can see Alana wouldn't be able to do this because she's got a conflict on this day now if I send that okay so I didn't set the time frame for that but it doesn't matter now let's see if I get an email on that one Ashley will get an email as well but I should also get an email it might take a few seconds to come through so I won't wait for it now so you so there's different ways of booking and I've also got the option of doing a new booking up there selecting the course and then this one now I have to select a person because I didn't double click on it off work till eight o'clock off work till eight o'clock so okay discard that I won't bother so the calendar view you can create a booking you can create a booking through the bookings form so that's probably the main use of it so a client is going to be doing this selecting from here but where you'd be doing um, bookings yourself through the calendar is if somebody rang up and said i want to book a course on a particular day and you're you're adding it manually next to a, a, a staff member that's when you'd use that option and then the top option there is home where you've got some analytics there courses booked and revenue have not made any money and customers booked like so and across the top you've got some cards that come up that give you some options some of these are tits because i've already done it but you've got these that have done set reminders haven't done and add your services that's um i have done that add your stuff i have done that and you've got these options so basically that's the um bookings app in office 365 quick overview of it. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you get some good use out of it. But thank you for your time.